Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, depending where you're joining from. I am very aware that there are, there are people from all over the world here in this uh, session today, and uh, we would appreciate if you can tell us your name and where you're joining from so that us as speakers know, you know, who is there, you know, and we can start seeing the love, like the international love. This is Belen Gallego. I am the representative of ATA Insights, and I'm joining from Madrid today. And with us here, the, the, discussing the issue of bifacial design in bifacial PV projects, I uh, have three top experts, and I'm going to introduce them shortly. Just to let you know, this session is actually a follow-on on the session that we had yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about the panels themselves, you know, how do they work, the bifacial panels, how um, each, you know, manufacturer are looking at them and, you know, what are their technical specifications. But today, we look not only at the panel, but the whole project. What do you have to take into consideration? How do you put together this project? Do you use the same equipment? Do you use different equipment? How can you make those calculations? With us today, discussing this topic, we have Aniruda from Sterling and Wilson. Aniruda, can you please introduce yourself really shortly and also tell us where you're joining from? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. It depends on the place we are joining. So, I'm Aniruda. I handle. I'm from. I'm representing Sterling and Wilson, which is one of the largest solar EPC currently active globally. Uh, and I am handle the BD for the North America, or Europe, and the North Africa. So. I'm here to talk about a very interesting topic of bifacial, which is talk of the town uh, for all the events we have been in the past few days. So uh, we will move forward uh, once we have. Where are you today? Oh, I'm based out of Dubai. Currently, I'm in Dubai. Uh, in Dubai. Okay, so we have an in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Antonio, tell us, can you introduce yourself shortly and where you're joining from? Yes, uh, everybody, thanks for the invitation. I'm Antonio Ruta, I'm a technical manager of the PSP of Cinco Solar uh, from Latin America and uh, Italy. At the moment, uh, I'm joining from Brazil. So we have Antonio in Brazil, and last but very much not least. Thank you, Belen. Uh, yeah, my name is Colin Caulfield. I'm calling in from San Francisco, California. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Soltech in North America, and Soltech is the third largest tracking company uh, on the planet, and we've been taking a, a leading role with bifacial design specifically, uh, having put in our first plan about three years ago, and I've been leading the charge here in, in the U.S. for getting us more projects with bifacial and our bifacial testing facility here in Livermore, California. Thank you very much. So we've got people from EDF Chile, we've got Bharat in India, Egypt, Morocco, Argentina, UAE, Thailand, uh, Yolanda from Gonvari, the Netherlands. Anyway, welcome everybody, you know, keep sharing. And before we start, and the first one to speak will be Aniruda, you'll speak from the EPC perspective, then we'll go to Antonio from the panel perspective, and then uh, also Colin from the, the tracker perspective. Can I have everyone please just answer this quick poll for me so that we know who's in the room? Naraceli, if you can just, are you serious? Like, are you seriously considering going for a bifacial project next? Is your next project bifacial? If you can manage it, you know, it's one of those things, you know, we're really seriously considering it. I'm going to do a countdown from five, okay? And after that, we're gonna close the poll. So please get your votes in. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see what people are thinking in terms of, okay, this is good, this is good. This, is, this should go to this effect, the fact that 77% of all projects then out there should become bifacial or quite large. And can we have the second poll? We want to also understand what are the biggest issues you're seeing there uh, at the moment? What is the biggest challenge you see in developing bifacial PV projects? Is it you know, I put a number of things there to see, is it the project design? You don't know how to design the project, you're still unsure, you know, what to take into consideration. Are you not really that sure about the cost-benefit analysis? You know, you understand well what you already have, you know, you know this should be better, but not sure how. Uh, all of the treatment of the albedo or the ground, you know, the, are there doubts in terms of how to treat it, how best to do it? Do you have the right albedo, the, right, the wrong albedo? Do you just require more information? You're still not sure how the panels work or, you know, what you need in terms of boss extra? Is it an issue of financing? You know, you can't get the banks to agree, to understand, or is it another issue? I'm going to count from three. 
three, two, one, go. Can you show us, please? Right, interesting. So most people are okay with project design. It's actually the cost benefit analysis that interests them. They require more information and the financing is also something that is in their mind. Thank you very much for those votes. So now we have something already to bear in mind when you guys are talking. So Aniruda, if I can ask you please to share your screen. And whilst he prepares, I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that we are, of course, recording this session as we record them all, and we will be sending you an email with the recordings, a link to the recordings, and also the presentations that all the speakers use. So you're going to be able to review this uh, again or share, send it to your team or however you like. Also, um, Q&A. There is a Q&A box at the bottom. It says Q&A on it or preguntas y respuestas, depending on you know whether you're joining from Latin America. Just click on it, you can send us the questions and we'll try to take as many as possible during the session. So, Aniruda, are you okay with uh, sharing your presentation? Yes, I am. Yep. Excellent, thank you very much. So I hope you all can see it. We can see it, but now it's perfect. Go ahead. Yes. Then. Okay. So, hi everyone. I think that was a very interesting poll. Thanks, thanks, Valen. Uh, good to know that everybody is not talking about bifacial and people are really keen to go in the next project, which is this kind of module. So, uh, it gives us a very intense and interesting opportunity from the EPC perspective. I will try to cover some of the aspects and some of the queries regarding bifacial in my today's session so that people can be more educated uh, about the use of uh, this technology which we believe would be a next game changer in terms of the solar, in, in the solar industry. I think uh, just to give you a quick, quick snapshot of, uh, of uh, the solar, I think we all know the market is really expanding and we are very optimistic that the PV will become the lowest source of energy in coming, in coming days. In fact, not, not uh, in some regions, but globally we are talking about. And uh, in order to sustain this downward trajectory of uh, of the tariff, what we have seen in recent past, in some of the some of the recent tenders, uh, we are continuously striving to to reach to a low uh, new technology or new optimization in the industry. And bifacial could be the answer. We all feel uh, could be one of the answer for this. So, what is bifacial? Uh, I think uh, uh, we all know that the transition from poly to mono. Uh, happened in last few years. And now we have almost 30 to 40 gigawatt of installations of monopark uh, already happened globally. And bifacial is a natural transition from moving from the monopark to the, to the mono bifacial uh, surface. So this is more of a trusted technology, but the only difference what we have is now, we are also able to generate power from the backside of the modules and we are able to increase the efficiencies of the similar site and from the same module. So uh, this is one, uh, one good aspect about bifacial. If you look at, uh, now we, when we talk about bifacial, there are basically two important parameters we all need to look at. One is bifaciality factor and bifaciality factor is basically uh, the amount of radiation uh, we are able to generate, you know, the power we are able to generate from the rear side versus the versus the incident. So uh, this is an important parameter which we all need to look at uh, when we are looking for a bifacial module selection. And in the bifacial side, we have two types of modules, which we all know which is coming in the market, which is one is P-type and another is N-type. Uh, from the economics point of view, currently P-type is more widely spread and widely used. And, but uh, going forward, there are chances that the N-type will become more popular because the efficiencies of generating the power in the hand type modules from the rear side is, is definitely more, but currently the economics are slightly opposite. And that's why the more widely spread modules which we are currently uh, using is uh, P-type. Uh, so another factor, what we need to consider for the for designing a plant with a bifacial modules is the LP load. See, the issue is uh, that there are a lot of people who want to do the bifacial, but not all of them are aware that the bifacial may not be the best suited technology or the optimized solution for each site. So we have different parameters which comes into consideration whenever we are selecting the right technology. And for the bifacial to be successful, 
uh, we really need to look at the albedo value of of that site and when when we talk about albedo albedo is basically the reflectivity of a non luminous surface and it's a very easy way to calculate albedo it's a, and it's a ratio between the light which is reflected from the surface and the incident radiation so it's uh, and there are ways we can capture this albedo so uh, we have to have a pyrometer installed upside down and that's how we install the albedo so uh, the idea to talk about albedo the higher the albedo value is the more the generation would be uh, and if we all know that the white surface has a better reflectivity that, as compared to the black surface so if you look at the at, if you look at the sites which are nearer to the snow or which are near to the uh, to the uh, to the cold and area cold cold area so they will have a more albedos versus the site which has more grassy because the albedo values for such site will be less so this is another important factor which we need to factor in whenever we are talking about the cost benefit analysis uh, uh, for a specific site uh, the amount see uh, then i just to give you an example uh, what how the albedo values might differ from the Radius surface one is sorry, one is the snow. If you see the snow albedo value is almost seventy percent versus the dark road, which is four percent. So the more the albedo, the higher the duration. And currently, if you talk from the EPC perspective, uh, we feel the bifacial could be a very very good combination if we install it with a tracker. I agree. Initially, we had certain challenges when we were talking about albedo when we were talking about installing uh, bifacial with tracker because people were not very uh, confident about the gains we may be able to get from uh, uh, bifacial modules with tracker but now if you look at uh, at the current scenarios and the recent uh, uh, projection which has happened or progress which has happened in the recent time epcs are getting more and more confident in guaranteeing the generation from the tracker and just to give you a, a very short example, the gain from the tracker, uh, if you're installing the tracker versus a fixed yield is almost 10 to 15%. And similar gains could be obtained by the bifacial. So 10-15% uh, gain from tracker and 10 to 15% gain from the bifacial could actually see the actual gain coming uh, from the similar site going up to 20-30%. So it's like a synergy effect, what we call it. It's like one plus one is not two, but it is more than two. So we still feel, we strongly feel the bifacial with the tracker would be a great combination. And uh, we also have the team from the tracker supplier within our uh, in session. So he will also talk uh, more about this. So another thing which we all, which we all talk about is uh, the bankability. I think what this is one of the second uh, related uh, question, you know, the people were more curious. So, when it comes to the bankability of the bifacial uh, technology, it is still it is still a uh, question mark for some of the people. But we feel as an EPC, we are working with a lot of IPPs, and uh, uh, there are ways we can manage the the bankability of the project. We are also working with uh, serious players where we are doing the test bids, and if we have for the certain tenders, if we have some time available uh, to prepare ourselves for the bids, we are also installing albedo meter. And normally, when we talk about albedos, we don't. We only need to capture the albedo data for a week or for a ten days time, and we we use that data set to to extrapolate and 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 guarantee the generation. So, if we are able to do so for a project for a period of 10, 15 days, I think from the EPC perspective, we are very very confident of guaranteeing the gains uh, from the generation. And uh, as a very bankable EPC, when when an EPC is taking all the risk on the generation, the financing lenders, financial institutions also feel more confident on accepting it. Secondly, we are also working with the third parties in 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 you know getting a double check or double sign off. Uh, similarly, as an IPP who is also doing that, so uh, this is one area which I think which which could definitely be resolved by proper planning and by proper. Uh, uh, cross syncing for the EPC frame. And uh, if we talk about the impact on the installation, so when we talk about the installation side, normally the, the albedo value is dependent on the height of the tracker. Uh, and how does it impact? The more higher we go, the better albedo we, we capture. Uh, if you look at if you look at the average or the, the standard height for the tracker, it is recommended to install modules between 1.8 
to 2.35 meter height. Uh, the the way we calculate the optimized height is to capture the albedo at different uh, height space. So as an EPC, what we do, we, we capture albedo at say two meter and 2.35 meter, and then we do our sensitivity analysis. So for a typical project of 100 megawatt, we do the sensitivity going from a different height, and then we 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 actually come to the right cost effective solution because with going from the higher height also impacts the structure cost and also the because of the wind load increasing on the tracker your foundation cost goes up so it is very very important uh, to do this analysis on the gain on the energy versus the cost escalation and i think if we do it correctly it is uh, we can be highly beneficial by from using my efficient model second thing which is still a question mark on how do we how do we clean the bifacial module? So uh, I think the recommended height for now is two meter to 2.2 meter because for now we do not have a cleaning solution which is going up to that high. Uh, of course, robotic solution is one one of the case, but uh, if we are talking about semi-automatic robots, it is getting very difficult to lift those uh, robots and place it on the different pros. So currently, the the best optimized way of cleaning the models is emphasized by by trucks. Uh, that is another reason where we are limiting the height uh, and not going beyond 2.35 meter. Another important thing we have to factor in is in the installation of the cables because uh, uh, the proper cable management, if we are not, if it is not done, it may impact on the shadow uh, loss on the module. So it is highly recommended that the cables are properly tucked in and we have been very minimal shadow loss coming from the cables. Uh, I think one more question, which is still uh, very, very uh, you know, discussed in the forums, are which modules to go for, whether we go for a frameless modules or whether we go for a uh, frame module. Uh, there are theories which says if you use frame modules, that there may be a more shading and the generation may be impacted. And but on the on the flip side, if you are using a frameless module, your clamps. The installation cost goes up because now we are using clamps for the installation of modules. So this is something which uh, we need to work very closely with the tracker suppliers. So a cost sensitivity analysis is needed to do to be done on on both the aspect. But typically we have seen we are always benefited if we are going for a frameless modules because what is happening in recent time uh, many of the module manufacturers are passing their this this part of the cost on the tracker suppliers and for the tracker supplier to absorb this cost is much more easier than the than 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 the module supplier so this is another important factor which we need to take into consideration to go for a frameless versus frame module so what what does a B, what does the bifacial modules how does they impact on the BOS costing? So if we if we look at the BOS side, uh, now we are able to generate more power from the same side. So that your inverter sizing becomes very more crucial because if your inverters are not sized uh, correctly or in most optimized way, we can end up in, in having more clipping loss. So that is one aspect we have to take into consideration. Another is now we are using less number of trackers uh, because uh, we have more generation, we are, coming from the same site. So we are able to meet the energy data from the from less tracker supply. Plus the watt peak of these modules is more than the standard modules, which is 330. So the bifacial modules, the standard size we get is around 370, 365 range. So it is a it is an upside of 10% on the on the capacity and which reflects in the same on the BOS side. Second thing is due to higher current rating, we cannot use Y, y connector in this. So uh, what happens that your number of inputs to the combiner box will go up. That is second. Also, people talk about the voltage and the thermal coefficient. What happens to this? Because bifacial is a natural progression of monofacial uh, modules and they're using the same technology. There is no impact on the voltage and the thermal coefficient. So uh, we designed the plant similar to what how do we design for the rest of the technology. So. In terms of designing, there is not much, uh, not much changes. The only, the only consideration which we need to make is, uh, opt is coming to a right height uh, on the tracker and coming to the right pitch because uh, the pitch also plays a very important role in, in impacting the albedo. So the more the pitch is, we get the, the better the, the incidence on the rear side of the 
of the panel. But again, there are a few questions which uh, we still need to figure out uh, on the bifacial side. Uh, uh, people talk about managing the albedo values and how do we manage uh, people say we can use the white paints uh, on the ground but then again we have to do the cost analysis for doing this so that is one then second is of course the cleaning of the models on the rear side uh, of the panel so currently we do not have any any ready-made solution and we we do not have any right prediction of how much soiling uh, could be accumulated on the rear side but uh, uh, from the EPC guaranteeing point of view, uh, I think we are confident on managing this uh, as we feel the soiling will not will not be that it, it will not impact the generation that much. And this is something which can easily be managed uh, by manual cleaning uh, if we do it once in a six month or once in a year. So uh, this is this is another aspect which still we need to figure out. But uh, this is still under uh, under some control. Uh, between the EPCs and the IPP. Then uh, what is the cost implication we already talked about, but the clear understanding of the albedo, because normally what people are doing, they are not capturing the albedo data for a site, but if we start doing it, I think with more and more data inputs available for us to do this analysis, uh, people can take more aggressive calls on the generation and people that we can de-risk ourselves. So, uh, typically what happens when we do not know, when we don't have the answer to anything, we, as an EPC, we start building the uh, a contingency for that. So if we are able to get more input or more insight on the LBDO, we can remove those contingencies and I think we can be more competitive in terms of our offerings and we can be more aggressive in, in terms of our generation guarantee. So uh, we are already working on this initiative as an uh, we already have a test bed in, in, in India where we are testing almost 100 kilowatt of modules on the bifacial and we are doing this analysis for last three months. So uh, we have right amount of data set available for us to understand the gain. We have seen generally the gain which is coming from the bifacial is between the range of 7 to 10 percent, of course, depending on the site. But on an, from a commercial point of view, if you look at a 7% gain on the energy versus 5% escalation on the capex, it still makes sense to go with the bifacial modules. And uh, just to summarize my entire uh, session, uh, we all feel that next year it will be very exclusive growth uh, for the in this in this technology on the bifacial, especially a uh, lot of development, lot lot of R and D is needed on the tracker side. Uh, I'm sure uh, our our colleagues are already working on it, and the bifacial tracker is one of the most exciting untapped opportunities which we all need to figure out and and take it forward. So I would like to sum my my entire discussion here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was just going to say, you know, in terms of time, thank you very much. And yes, absolutely, Colin is going to be talking about the tracker side, but first we're just going to hear from Antonio. If you can stop uh, sharing at the top, Aniruda. Uh, and also, um, your contact details are in the presentation, correct? So people, if they need anything, excellent. Antonio, your turn. I'm a little bit mindful of time because I'd like you to, guys to have the opportunity to ask questions, but we'll see how we're going. So Antonio, you know how to... Yeah. Can you see my presentation? Not yet, now. Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot. So let's start. Thanks. Some topics have been already exploited by my previous relator, so I'm going to buy Gene for Solar point of view and just to introduce the models, the technology, and how we see the potential development of this bifacial technology. First, we start about Gene for Solar. We are. Gene Solar is actually the first world producer in terms of capacity. We have a global presence around the world, more than eight global factories, 31 official subsidiaries. We are present in more than 80 countries uh, with uh, local representatives, and we are uh, around 15,000 employees. Our capacity is uh, was for the year uh, 2017 and 95 gigawatt. We expect it to be to have uh, capacity, total capacity this year from 11.5 to 12. This is, was uh, the last data we got from our financial results. 
And now, thanks to our investment, thanks to our, uh, there is a R&D department, so we are looking always for new products to diversify, sorry, to diversify our portfolio. So we are at the moment uh, have from polycrystalline, monocrystalline, uh, type uh, perk, uh, monocrystalline, uh, in, uh, bulk, uh, we do have glass, uh, glass back sheet, uh, bifacial, as you can see here, this is just a few, just, a, just a, a, an example how we can diversify. And we have more than 230 VOM combinations from different cell technology, model type, and add-on solution. So, the, and the bifacial is, we see that the bifacial at the moment is a one of the, the products that have the most potential in the development. Some tech concept about uh, bifacial. Yes, uh, a bifacial practically at the moment is uh, the, the top fashion models at the moment in the TV industry because uh, here we can see there is the best potential to lower the COE and uh, to increase the, the return of the investment. And uh, we expect to have, uh, uh, from next year when we will be run the mass production, a capacity of 1.4 gigawatts. And our mass production will start from Q4. So we are able to provide offer for delivery from the, next, from the, the end of the year. Then, sorry, um, why this slide? We, by fascia cell, we combine the PET technology using, uh, and uh, so let me introduce mono PET technology of Cinco Solar. This is not just, uh, just the, the mono perk permitted to have high density power and the, to have a modus that, of course, is uh, permitted to jump to, to lower the system cost and uh, to, uh, to boost the efficiency. Uh, we have a range uh, at the moment from 350 to 370 for 72 cells models. And the bifacial, bifacial will is using this uh, this backfire, this this uh, pack technology to, um, using the back side the back side of the cell not as a passive part but as an active part so even the back side of the of the cell helps to increase the production before they were introducing some concept like uh, bifacial factor and uh, this depends, of course, on the, te of the technology. We, we will have most of the production based on T-type models, but uh, we will have even some production of N-type. So, and the bifacial factor of the N-type due to the shared technology will be higher. The bifacial models, it is a way, the, the standard way how we present the models, how it's done. It is practically laminated by two temperature glass using the two ABA and the cell is in the middle. Combining this with some junction box that will be on the back side. The scope of the bifacial, of course, why it is now everybody looking for bifacial? Because bifacial is used not only the front side, but also the back side of the, of the model. So, so it's able to increase the, the, the power output of the single models according to the external condition. So, compared with the monofacial, we expect, if of course uh, optimized in designing, we, we expect to have even from uh, up to 20 25% more energy than the conventional monofacial. And how we can, uh, let me say, the, the, the define the, this gain, this bifacial model gain. Of course, we need to compare the models at the same condition. So the bifacial gain will be compared to, to the same, uh, the, the production compared to the same monofacial um, models at the same condition, means the same size, same configuration, and during the same time period. And of course, 
the bifacial uh, uh, game is, uh, depends on some several para uh, parameters. It, they were introduced before, the bedo, the solar radiation, climate condition, the design of the structure, the, the problem of the rear shading, distance between the roads, and uh, this, the, all these parameters affect the final, the final performance of the system. As a model producer, of course, we are going to, to just to affect the DC side of the, of the design, not, not the AC side. So we are just going our support and our tips about our support suggestion, just how you know, to combine and providing the main information. As it was introduced, the, the beta is the, is the parameter that, of course, affects a lot the final production. Before I've been given some numbers, I'm not uh, taking time at all to show you how, well, I mean, this is just to let you know how the albedo could affect. But not only the albedo, it is also the, the nature of the, the nature of the ground where you are and even the environmental conditions. So the albedo is just the final results of a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, let me say, parameters that are affecting the environment and surrounding the DVD system. Uh, these are some uh, yeah, performance that we have tested in-house using, uh, compared to the normal poly sets and uh, N-type and uh, P-type models in uh, roof, white paint roof and the cement floor. You see there is uh, some difference. This of course was in an limited period of time. But it's just to see that there are some potential to go ahead and the bifacial is a little bit potential. About the other parameters, I don't want to bother you because I guess the, my, the next related topic can explore this concept in a better way. But it's just to give you some, uh, some tips and to be aware that the design is very important. So the, 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 this is uh, the bifacial, we works on the, if the combination of the design from this side, most of the structure, and in depth, uh, will uh, work perfectly to in order to gain, in order to, uh, remote, to use the, the bifacial uh, gain uh, energy. This is uh, just uh, some topics how to use uh, to simulate in uh, PV system that is at the moment is the, the main software we are here to go to, you can contact us if you want to have uh, some uh, the pump file or some uh, suggestion how to the design the, 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 the bifacial uh, system. And uh, finally, just a summary from a uh, model producer point of view, of course, uh, we saw that the bifacial has a great, great potential. Still, from our side, we saw that there are a lot of uh, potential development in order to reach higher class power. Uh, we are looking to, to use for the next year also not only the six inch cell, we are going to use a larger cell, which is a 6.25 inch, okay? And this will permit it to have uh, high density power in one model and to increase the efficiency of the same power. So the concept that you know, backside reflection is power output. The, there are some consequences, of course. Being a glass, glass the potential, the, the same panel, if you're using the same cell, perfect technology, but in this case, by partial, you're going to do so from one to two glass, depending on the fact that this is glass, glass lamination. So we cannot use the reflecting area. But of course, the potential is quite high because we can achieve 25% energy depending on the several factors I told you before. I must introduce another, another, another topic. Still, there are no international standards to define the bifacial models. So all the certification, all the information that are now in the market are still based on monofacial, monofacial let me say, point of view. There are some standards that, that will be released to get uh, by uh, 2019. And uh, all this will permit, of course, also to have uh, the same level of information uh, between the producer. 
So at the moment, we are all the producers are just focusing on the two main concepts front side power and by fashion power. We expect that with the new standard, we, there will be a, a the, the alignment in order to have a good way to compare all the Bifascial models in the same way. The, the Bifascial is also a great uh, with advantage because it's, uh, the value is against aesthetic. We are going to propose only 1500 support system, so for a big installation, this is very suitable for the ground uh, utility scale system. We are going to use frameless and not uh, to propose a frameless F with frame uh, models according to the necessity, the, the needs of our customer. Of course, there will be also some, some uh, improvement in terms of uh, performance warranty because being a glass glass, we can propose a uh, performance of 0.5% per year for 30 years. And the being, of course, being glass uh, glass, uh, we um, this model is quite, uh, let me say, has a stronger resistance for uh, uh, a very harsh, a very hard environment. So, especially, especially when you are going to install these models in a very uh, in very environment with the sadness, ash, and acids. So we are available. You can contact us via via email in order to send us this information about the what it will be our proposal for the end of the, the end of the year, type of panel, size, of power plus. And uh, I'm finished. Thanks Thank for you your attention. Much. Thank you very much, Antonio. If you can stop sharing so that we can give now the opportunity to Colin. Thank you very much. And you've already Thanks. seen also Antonio's presentations gone around. So we'll allow Colin to also share. Uh, Aniruda, amazing. You're applying a lot of questions. Please keep going. Uh, Antonio, feel free also to jump in. Uh, he's already replied to like 25 questions or such. Uh, and there are 16 more to come. So clearly, you guys are very interested. We'll do our best at the very end. But we might be a little bit short on time. So, Antonio. Okay. All right, well, keeping ahead. that in mind, um, I'll do my best to get through this time effectively. So, reminder, oh, guys, my name is Colin Caulfield. Um, calling in from California with Soltec. Soltec is a world leader uh, tracker supplier, and we've been kind of leading the charge on bifacial tracker designs. Um, what you can see in the background there is a uh, side of the back shot of our tracker from the, I guess, original bifacial plant that we did some three years ago down in Chile. I'll have some more information on that as we go through the presentation. Um, so a little bit about uh, our evolution with the design. Uh, we designed that first plant back in 2015. It's just a two and a half megawatt plant that was doing some comparisons between uh, 60 cell bifacial modules and monofacial modules uh, to try and quantify the gains that you see between the two types. Uh, so you'll notice on the backside of the, of the tracker there, we've designed in some extra spaces to allow light to pass through and so as to not shade the backside of the module, which is of course one of the uh, limiting factors that a lot of tra tracker designs have. Um, so what we notice is that as uh, Ani Ruda had explained, you know, having the, tra the tracker higher off the ground, being free of shadows on the backside and having wider aisles are all going to be factors that come into play and help maximize the gain that you can see from, uh, from one of these systems. Um, so currently, we're also having our, our own uh, project or our own comparison. This The first one that I was mentioning was for one of our primary customers. But in Livermore, California, we're running uh, what we're calling BITEC, our Bifacial Tracker Evaluation Center. Um, and this is a say controlled experiment where we're isolating a lot of the different factors around height of the tracker, pitch, uh, different types of albedo and different soil types. Um, and the shading influences or the losses associated with having shades on the back side of the tracker. Uh, it's a collaboration with NREL and with Black and & Veatch. Black & Veatch will be providing some bankability studies that folks can use uh, for third-party verification so that when uh, people are trying to get financing for these projects, uh, they have some third-party studies to verify the assumptions. Um, I know that we've explained this with uh, the past couple of panelists so far today, but I'll, I'll try and put this into layman's terms. Uh, it's very important to understand the energy gain or understand the concept of how we're going to have more yield out of these bifacial systems or panels. Um, and that is a factor of the 
uh, let's say the albedo that you have or the site conditions that you have, the rear irradiation, and the bifaciality of the modules themselves, which vary from one manufacturer to the next. Um, and uh, the other thing to take into consideration is that, you know, with different conditions, even for the weather, whether you have direct, uh, and sorry, I want to minimize this. There we go. Uh, whether you have diffuse radiation or direct light, uh, that can also affect uh, even your algorithms or your strategy for tracking and, and uh, how you can maximize the amount of light that you collect. Uh, I don't seem to be able to advance the slides. There we go. Okay. Um, another piece here that we want to take into consideration is the albedo itself or the ground surface. The ground surface conditions can have a really strong effect on how much extra yield uh, you can collect. Uh, now, the goal, of course, is to have something that is white and smooth for your surface because it's going to be most reflective and have uh, the best results. So something like snow in the wintertime, though not ideal for solar in general, is great for bifacial results. Um, and when you contrast that with something like volcanic rock, which would be a surface that is very um, non-uniform and dark, it would uh, not yield the same type of results. And then you have everything in between being, you know, uh, I guess green grass in the spring, especially in California, and then dry grass that you might see in the summer or fall, um, especially out here in the experiment that we're doing in Livermore. Um, this is another piece that we're isolating as part of the experiment. We are going to have some uh, surfaces that stay the same all year long, being gravel, and then other ones that we allow, let's say, the seasonal changes to occur over the course of the year and what kind of effect that has on production. So looking here, um, this was also mentioned in some of the prior uh, presentations, but to give you a graph representation, uh, this uh, on the right hand side here, you have along the X axis, the, the effect of the albedo or the influence of the albedo on the production. Um, and, and the different lines that are there are accounting for different pitches. So as was mentioned, the wider the pitch, uh, the more yield or the more gain that you have uh, from your system. The albedo is a much more, let's say, influential factor uh, than the pitches. But of course, the pitch is something that we are much more in control of when we're designing a plant and designing the tracker. Um, so it's nice to be able to take both these things into consideration. Uh, when we look here, of course, this is just giving you another um, uh, view factor of, of what the uh, influence is on the open space between aisles and how uh, light is uh, collected on the back side. Um, and if you look over here to the right, again, uh, these four different lines are representing different albedo. So you see that the influence of that is far greater than the pitch, of course. But uh, along the x-axis now, you're seeing the rise uh, in production associated with having a wider pitch. Now, as you creep further above 12 meters, or you know, in our case, that would be a, a, a GCR of about 33%, uh, you start to not see such a sharp difference from uh, one to the next as far as how much production you're collecting. Um, so, of course, being that all solar plants are going to be somewhat limited in the amount of space that they have available, um, we like to find that sweet spot. Uh, generally speaking, we think that uh, a GCR of about 40% is going to yield the best results and, uh, let's say, have the most savings on land or be the most efficient that you can be on land. Uh, but even going up to about 33%, you do see some significant gains depending on what the albedo is uh, on the site, and it might be uh, worthwhile to look at one of those wider pitches. Um, looking here, this is making a direct comparison of the influence of GCR on the front side and on the back side of the module, and the influence of the albedo on the front side and the back side of the module. So looking at the graph on the left, um, we'll, we'll notice that the GCR, of course, can even have, or I guess looking first at the top section of that, you'll see that there's a very big difference between uh, having a much wider GCR than there is having a much tighter GCR on how much energy is collected on the backside. On the front side, which is the gray part of the 
left graph there, the lower section, um, you'll see that the front side is also very affected by this. Um, this is primarily due to shading. The tighter your row spacing, of course, the uh, greater influence or, or greater incidence there is of shading. Uh, so the more that you minimize that, the more you can maximize your uh, production on the site. And then if we look at the graph on the right hand side, you have the influence of the albedo, again, top section being on the rear side and the lower section being on the front side. Now, it should serve as no surprise that on the rear side, um, of course, that albedo has a massive influence on how productive uh, the plant is and how productive the panels are. Um, but even the front side can be affected by this. Uh, the more albedo that there is on a site, uh, even the front sides of the modules can collect more light and therefore uh, produce more energy. Um, so just something to take into consideration when you're looking at a, a site and thinking what type of soil it has and, and what type of performance you can expect out of the plant. Um, then, of course, there's the view factor. Now, Soltech um, has always offered a two up in panel portrait orientation uh, tracker. So naturally, we were very well suited for um, bifacial applications, just being that we were higher off the ground than most of the other manufacturers that are out there. Um, being higher off the ground, of course, the shadows are less intense and you collect more light on the backside. However, there is a sweet spot for this as well, right? So uh, you'll notice on the graph on the right, it does show an, a representation, again, accounting for different albedos of what the influence is of height on production. Um, we find that ideally our height should land from grade to bottom of the module at, uh, at stow position, about 2.35 meters or 7.7 .7 feet. Um, if you go lower than that, you start to see reductions in productivity. If you go higher than that, you do start to see some gains in productivity. But of course, there's a balance that you have to strike between uh, the associated costs, not only with the extra metal that it would take to raise the tracker further off the ground, but then of course the engineering behind having the loads that much higher and uh, the labor that's associated with being able to put the tracker together at such a height. Um, so again, uh, our conclusion, or I should say, our uh, our theory is that the 2.35 meter is is kind of that ideal height for us. Um, this is another thing that we're testing on our facility there in Livermore, California. We do have some trackers that are as high as three meters, and we have some other ones that are around 1.5 meters. Um, so we're going to see, you know, what that influence is with real data. Um, and, uh, and we'll also have some uh, labor assumptions that go along with that so that we can, you know, find that uh, conclusion around what that sweet spot is. Um, lastly, or I shouldn't, certainly not least, right, but uh, another a very important influence is the, the shade on the backside of the, of the modules. So as I was mentioning that our tracker was, was well suited because it was already higher off the ground, it's also very easy for us to adapt it uh, such that it doesn't cast shadows on the backside of the modules. Um, of course, we had a torque tube running along the middle, and we've simply widened that space uh, around the torque tube so as to allow more light to uh, pass through and reflect off the ground. And moreover, um, we've raised it a few inches off of the torque tube, so the torque tube itself is something that reflects light back onto the, the undersides of the module. Um, so having uh, also just fewer piles uh, creates fewer shadows on the backside. And we also have a wire management system um, that uses the torque tube as a conduit, as a home run conduit. Um, so when taking the DC cabling, going from one tracker to the following, you can use that, um, that torque tube as a way to incubate the wires and also, also of course keep them from shading the backside of the module and taking up space. Um, so these are things that, uh, again, help the uh, productivity of the, of the bifacial modules and avoid shade, shading on the backside. Um, now, looking at this case study from 2015, this was the project that we did from one of our, our primary customers. Um, we can see on this graph on the left the different um, months of the year and what the energy gain was over the monofacial uh, panels that were on the site and an average that we um, took for those uh, eight months of data. Um, we landed around 13% as the gain over monofacial for the year. This fluctuated, of course, with the different months of the year and, and you know, being um, 
I guess, a little bit stronger in the April and May months there. Um, so we're expecting that, you know, this was a, a, a good case, of course, for bifacial. This was a high desert. Um, there was not a lot of vegetation to control. Um, but uh, for a lot of cases, especially like what we're seeing in California, we think these numbers should be uh, fairly consistent with what we expect to see um, uh, at our Livermore plant. Uh, all right, and so moving on to this graph, this is uh, an interesting economic case um, for what you can expect out of uh, designing your, your plants for bifacial modules. Um, this is a comparison between a tracker plant that would be 50 megawatts for uh, monofacial equipment versus bifacial equipment in two different scenarios. The one on the left, you're keeping the same peak power for the plant. And the one on the right, you're keeping the same kilowatt hours or production for the plant. Um, so if we look specifically at the column on the left hand side where it says same peak power, um, we will, of course, if you are to have a monofacial plant or this bifacial plant, be putting 50 megawatts worth of panels on top of the trackers. And therefore, your total number of model units would be the same. Um, the tracker or the module price, uh, we're assuming, and you know, this will, will vary from one manufacturer to the next. Um, we're expecting that there is some premium that will be put on the, on the panels themselves. So we're, you know, just to put a value in there, we were expecting around 10% for the, uh, the cost or the price of the panels that the customer will pay. Um, now in this scenario, of course, we have the same number of panels than we would have had for the monofacial plant. So your tracker units and price should be identical. Um, moving down to the next row, we have the medium voltage equipment, which accounting for the extra uh, production and current, um, that should also go up roughly 10%. Um, but the next three uh, criteria being the structure to build the labor, the civil works and the, the DC wiring should all be the same, assuming that you have the same number of panels um, and the same number of trackers that you have to build on the site. So uh, the end result would be that, you know, with the uh, panels, if we look at the same, uh, the bifacial gain that we had uh, for Chile, uh, the number of kilowatt hours per year would be about 14% higher, and your total cost would be about 6% higher. And depending on the structure of your deal, of course, this might be an extra cost that is well justified with the extra production that you have on the site. But if we look over at the case on the right hand side, which I actually find to be a much more interesting case, um, we're again solving for the kilowatt hours or keeping the same production on the plant that we would have had from a 50 megawatt monofacial plant. Um, and I find this to be much more interesting um, because you can see a significant savings and still get the same result that you would have from the, the monofacial plant. Um, the number of units that you would have in order to achieve that would go down by roughly 12%. Um, so overall, your cost for your modules would sink by about 4%. Remember that we're assuming that the module price itself is about 10% higher, but being that you're buying so many fewer of them, your net cost is about 4% lower. Um, your tracker units and price would go down in proportion with the uh, fewer modules that you're buying because you're also going to have to buy and install fewer trackers. Your medium voltage equipment should be the same, accounting for the same production. And then your, your labor for the structure, the civil works and the DC labor um, would all go down in proportion with how many fewer modules that you've bought. Um, so the end result would be that you have the same kilowatt hours production per year, but the price to the customer is roughly 7% lower than it would have been to get that same result out of a monofacial plant. So uh, to conclude these things, uh, we have uh, an expected gain um, of up to upwards of 35% if we're looking at you know, comparison with snow or some type of white uniform surface, which of course would be ideal conditions, um, and a gain of up to 17% in very good conditions that you might see on many plants worldwide um, where they have conditions like sand for example. Um, when you're designing these, these bifacial plants, the things that you want to take into consideration is having a soil that is, you know, as white and smooth as possible, keeping your pitch as wide as you can reasonably, you know, considering the amount of uh, land that you have available, um, keeping the height of the tracker or the structure as high off the ground as possible so as to collect as much, much yield or light as possible, and keeping the shading to a minimum. All of that will result in an energy gain. 
Um, so with that, thank you guys so much for listening and hopefully we still have a few minutes that we can dedicate to questions and answers. Thank you very much, Colin, and thank you very much, Aniruda and Antonio. We don't have a lot of time, actually, but I have to say, Aniruda and Antonio have been answering a lot of questions by text. As you can <laughs> thank see, you guys. they answered literally 51 questions. So mm. I was hoping to get the, their comments, actually. Aniruda, you first, like, shortly. What are people asking? You know, what are your reactions? And you want to throw out something there, maybe Antonio and Colin can give their opinions? Yeah, yeah. The most of the queries, I think the people are more concerned on how do we guarantee the generation. So, uh, the, the, like I already said, uh, uh, there are ways to guarantee the generation if we are able to capture the albedo for a site. Plus, if a EPC is able to guarantee the, uh, the generation and they are able to give you the financial guarantees to back up uh, those, uh, those generation guarantees, I think uh, banks are also accepting this and this is uh, equally acceptable to the IPPs. And, Considering the competitive scenario, what we are seeing, especially in Middle East and the Latin America, uh, this is surely being uh, considered by many of the players uh, to, to be taken into the next tenders. Thank you very much. Antonio, would you want to add? And then there is a question here for Colin, so I'm just going to ask him. Go for it. Antonio. Okay, no. No, no, I mean, it was uh, all the beneficial concept of being well exploited by APC point of view, the structure point of view, and of course, uh, our point of view that is the form of the producer. What I can say, we are really see that the beneficial and the other uh, model technology device, uh, perhaps uh, more attack, are at the moment uh, the, the, more, the technology that will have the best potential to grow and then we will have uh, market share growing in the next coming years. We expect it, as I told you, I expect it to have uh, one point uh, for gigawatt the next year. This is uh, our capacity. It is around uh, the, the same market share we expect for the partial, from 12 to 50% of the total capacity. And uh, as I already produced it for us, is at the moment really ongoing process because we of starting the mass production, and we're looking for a better improvement daily. So I'm expecting that we will have a really great results uh, with the production. Thank you very much, Antonio. So actually, did you answer the question that was there for you, uh, Colin? Because there was a question there that said whether in your last slide the numbers were for just the cost of the plant or MPG value? Sure. Yeah, I, I did my best to answer that by text, but so those are numbers assuming the CapEx prices. Um, there are also similar reductions in O&M and other long-term expenses. A um, little bit harder to quantify specifically, uh, but of course, if you're having fewer trackers that you need to maintain, um, fewer trackers on site that you need to do O&M work with, there is a proportional savings there as well. It's, it's just a matter of having less equipment than more. Excellent. Well, we'll run out of time, but you guys, this is the first ever webinar in which 54 questions get asked, get answered actually so quickly. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, the presentation were all really good and, and, and interesting. So, you know, all of them have the contact details of Antonio, Colin and Aniruda. So you feel free to email them if you have any further questions. I saw a lot of like well-known names there and some developers. So I'm sure they would love to hear from you. So sure. just thank you very much, Aniruda, for your time. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much, Colin. Okay. And thank you very much, everybody that is there. And I will see you in the next one so that you know you may be interested since you're interested in the topic. In a couple of months, we're running some O&M, how to design plants for better OPEX. So we'll be happy to receive you then. There's a link there Great. for our next webinars. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.